Kenyan literature guru Ngugi Wathiongo has penned a letter to President William Ruto. The letter is very deep and tries to dissect through William Ruto's trip to the United States of America. And I can tell you that here, I think we've been conclusively trying to cover and break it down. And so today I bounced on this letter. And I think I want us to look at what they are talking about. This letter is written by Ngugi Wadhyongo, dear William Ruto. The images of your recent state visit to USA were very disturbing to me and to every patriotic Kenyan. I saw you seated on a chair, grinning while Biden stood behind you, his face facing beaming with satisfaction. He continues to say, Why not? He had just announced that you had signed off our beloved Kenya to make it a non-member ally of NATO. In other words, you had agreed to become NATO's errand boy in America's struggle with Russia and China for access to resources of the continent. And therefore, I think now the continent of Africa. Ngugi continues to say, Ruto, do you know that NATO murdered Muammar Gaddafi so that Libyan oil fields, which Gaddafi had nationalized, would revert to the West? Gaddafi was once the chairman of African Union, of which Kenya was a founding member. But this other picture was no less disturbing. While you were inside the White House, You know, you know who told he's a slave, right? Yeah. He's a slave. Yes. Right. He's a slave. Why are you Haiti? saying that? I'm from Haiti. Yes, why we, we are here today to protest against what, what, what Ruto what, what is about to do. Yes. Yes. Why do you think it's a bad thing? It's a bad no, thing. You were to invade Haiti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, uh, with, uh, um, Still a slave. Still a slave. Still a slave. That one you were sacrificing power to the people. That one you were sacrificing power to the people. That one Kenya occupation power to the people. That one Kenya occupation power to the people. That one you were sacrificing. High times were in the streets demonstrating, calling you a stray, a slave. Do you know the, do you know the history of Haiti? Please read the, the Black Jacobins, the book written by once Jomo Kenyatta Pan-African Italy, C.L.R. James. Haiti, and now he, he speaks brief about Haiti. Haiti, now a black people state used to be a slave colony of France, but led by Toussaint Laurentiens, the richest colony of its time, fought French slavery, and in 1904, it seized its independence. In USA, slavery was then in full bloom. America did not want its African slaves to emulate Haiti, and it has never forgiven Haiti for that, and thus began the, his, the story of America's destabilization of Haiti. This is a very um, this is a very this is a very key point that I just want us to look at. He continues to say, Ruto, do you see the irony of your actions? The USA was originally settler colony 
taking over the land that belonged to Native Americans. In 1970, in 1776, the white settlers declared their independence from the English king, but the colonized Native Americans remained colonized. Kenya was equally a British settler colony. The white settlers wanted to have a similar kind of independence. But the Mau Mau led by Deren Kimati stopped them. Years later, Algeria, Rhodesia, and South Africa would follow the example of Kenya. Thus, the country you now lead was the first to stop the historical trend of white settlers claiming themselves independent, as in America, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. Ruto. You have chosen to betray that history of pride. Ruto, you have chosen, chosen to become an agent of the West. Ruto, you have chosen to sell your country cheap. Oh, why? Atlanta, Georgia, 28th, 2024, May. The voice of that speech, by the tone of that speech, that, that letter by Ngugi Wadiongo, is asking President Ruto tough questions. And I've just taken grasp, uh, grasp of the last bit where he's saying that we seem to be rolling back colonialism, something that Mama Warriors, Didan Kimathi, and the team really fought tirelessly so that Kenya would regain its independence. Now, this is an upfront, and, and of course, one of the photos that Kenyans have really been talking about is the photo where Biden gave his seat to William Ruto. And that was to be seen as something very special. You know, it was, it was, it was captured as a very big privilege. And now Ngugi Wadiongo is saying, Ruto, you have sold the soul of the nation. Now, in this bold podcast, I think we are trying to get into this in trying to do deep analysis in some of these developments on NATO. And our previous video that we've been watching have really been keen on this. The other second thing that Mugi Wadiango has mentioned dominantly there is the issue of Haiti. That while the president was actually, while the president is pushing for Haiti deal, does he know what exactly he is fighting, or who exactly is behind the Haiti destabilization. I'm just seeing a report now that Honorable uh, President Tutov said, uh, on behalf of the Republic of Kenya, I extend congratulations to Honorable Gary Connell on his appointment as the Prime Minister of Haiti. This significant step is not lost on the world and signifying the desire of, the, of our brothers and sisters in Haiti to forge way forward. He's mentioned about this and Haiti have gotten a new president, I think a new prime minister that is now going to replace Henry Orion, Orion Henry Orion, who was in the country and um, had to resign at the height of the violence that had broken out in Haiti. And the very significant point that Ngugi Wadiongo is asking a very big point on what exactly we are going to do in Haiti. And I want to interpret that letter looking at some of the developments that may be some of the few factors that Ngugi Wadiongo is pointing out there. But there is a question that I want to ask experts, people who understand um, maybe conflict resolution strategies or post-war. And allow me to borrow this question. Kenya is going to Haiti and we are taking more than, we are taking a thousand officers and there are also some of the police officers that are being brought in the country for them to be trained for some capacity building. I don't know that that is part of the US packaging or the UN. But Haiti is a UN-backed mission. One thing that is not very clear what is the post-peace objective? And let me just keep up something. Let me, let, me, let me just borrow what's happening in Netanyahu. 
um, the, 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 uh, the, the, there is a development there. When Israel beat Hamas, when Israel attacked Hamas, of course it was, it was a counter because Hamas started. U.S. has been complaining that Netanyahu seems not to have post-war plan and is a person that has commercialized the war. Because the question here is, what is next? Now, that is the same thing I want to take to height and what was this question? That's why I said, someone tell us, what exactly are we going to achieve in Haiti? Because if you go and fight, you neutralize the gangs and it ends at neutralizing them because the gangs can even retreat. But immediately you leave their land, they will come back. Now, if that is it, there will be resurgence. For example, in Somalia, Kenya went in Somalia more than 10 years ago. And now, there is a process of now leaving Somalia. But the Somali government is a bit divided that while some factors feel Kenya should leave, Kenya should not leave, one thing is more clear, and Kenya is afraid that if they leave Somalia, then the Al-Shabaab will prop up again. And that will be another insecurity scare for the country. So for in Haiti, what exactly is the plan? Are, we, is, is, are, the, are the multi 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 agency force, is it going to ensure that they hold an election and put a legitimate government? Or what exactly are they going to achieve? Because there is some very key component of the Haiti mission. If we send the police and they go crash the guns and they don't protect the civilians, then you know that mission will not be accepted by the citizens of Haiti. And you can see they protested in uh, in U.S. when the president, William Ruto, was in U.S. saying, what is the president of William Ruto going to do in Haiti? So the problem is that in Haiti is a bit more complex according to what Ngungi, Ngungi what the Omo is saying. But let us look at the key interpretation. Those are the two factors I just wanted to say, by the way. The two key interpretations of this. Ruto is wary, and Ngugi the Omo is warning the president that he must be wary of this elevation as the African head boy. And that is why he's asking William Ruto, Ngugi the Omo is saying, do you know that NATO killed Muammar Gaddafi. Muammar Gaddafi was killed on 20th October 2011. And that was at a time where he had nationalized the oil in Libya. It was working for the people. If you read some of the stories about Gaddafi, is understand that people leave school. Then before you get a job, you get salary. You know, no life was there. Because the oil was working for them. And by the way, before even for Gaddafi to thrust to power, Libya was a strong ally of the U.S. And so Gaddafi was, but the moment Gaddafi turned against the West, that is when the West also turned against him. So the question here is, is it going to be sustainable to sustain a bit of that dalliance of being an African head boy? And clearly, what Ngugi Wadema is telling President Ruto that you made a big blunder because just like what they did to Gaddafi, when you break ties, things are not going to work for you. And let me tell you, I've just realized something that overdalliance with the West creates, brings some hostility to the sovereign because you realize that most of the agendas that you push in your own country are the agendas of the West and they goes against the aspirations of the sovereign. Even as we speak now, William Ruto, while speaking in US, have said the first 100,000 electric cars that will arrive in the country will be tax, uh, taxes will be weighed on them. Now, that is supposed to encourage people to buy electric cars, which is probably on, on the front of, a, of, of um, and of course that is being captured because of protecting perhaps 
um, making people get business, market for those cars. But I asked members of this channel and I asked those who are in different countries, if you are in Europe, what is the acceptability of electric cars? And I saw someone telling me, I can't remember the country well, but I saw someone telling me that, Kevin, where we are, people don't want those electric cars. In this country, we even have a problem of electricity. So even when we speak about electric cars, with the current of numerous blackouts that, been, that we've been having in the country, I'm just wondering what kind of, what kind of thinking is there. That transition has to be there, but it has to be very slow. Look at another, another move against the sovereign. So apparently, a consortium of investors from the United States of America are supposed to construct Mombasa-Nairobi Highway, that Usahihi Expressway. And by the way, there is a mid to twist to it. It will be funded by local capital here. I don't just know which banks are going to risk doing that. And so, I read a story that won't the proponents of that expressway have said, and one of the responsibilities of the president is to ensure that all buses and trucks will be using the new expressway from Mombasa to Nairobi. That is a problem that we've had, we had when SGR was constructed. And people in this country will remember the numerous strikes that used to happen when truck drivers were protesting a decision that they were of being forced to move their goods from Nairobi to Mombasa using SGR. Now, importers used to complain of the cost and they would rather stick to the traditional way of transporting the stuff with the trucks. So here is a situation where Nairobi Mombasa Ex Expressway will be tolled. And both buses carrying passengers and trucks carrying goods, it will be necessary, or rather it will be a must that that is the route to use. And so it's supposed to render the traditional Mombasa Nairobi route obsolete. Remember it comes at a cost. The cost of traveling from Mombasa to Nairobi now by SGR, the, uh, the, the economy class, I think that the regular class was increased from 1,000 to 1,500. Now, in the toll road, if you include the toll fee and plus the fuel costs, the prices, the cost is going to be high. Now, that is why I'm saying that Africa or rather Kenya must be very wary of this. Number two, what we were then is also saying is about the stake of France. Haiti was a slave colony for France and they fought and chased the France from the region so that they would regain their independence. And so after that, America saw what happened to France in Haiti and they decided that they would also, because they're also having black slaves, they also didn't want to go through the same fate and they decided to design a scheme or a project to destabilize Haiti. So what is good what we're talking about here? That what America is posturing as solving is a problem that themselves they caused. And they're not so honest about maybe reaching the solution. Remember when in the US they were asked about why are you, you stopped the Afghanistan war nearly after 20 years, miles away, but you're commissioning the country Kenya for high mission miles away. That question did not have a very strict answer from Biden. So the stakes in Haiti are more. And with that background information on the situation in Haiti, it only tells you that the enemy could be hidden. And it is not true that really, even if it is a UN-backed mission, but not that the world is united to bring peace in Haiti. The hostilities in the sovereign might also so. You can see what's happening in West Africa when the countries and the presidents are having coup d'etats. They're actually throwing legitimately elected leaders and they're taking over power. And immediately after taking over power, the first thing they're doing is they're chasing those um, uh, multinationals. The, the colonizers. 
So with this coming into space, he's saying the reason why Gaddafi was crushed is because Gaddafi decided that the oil in Libya was supposed to work for the people of Libya. And immediately turned his back against the West, things went south. So if Ruto is going to be used as the gateway to smuggle the African resources to other countries in the West, then it's going to be an enemy of the continent. But will this then mean that there is de-recolonization of the country? Because if the more the country speaks about this, the question of revolution comes into play. Our politics might actually take a very interesting turn if the country takes a need and there is a clamor for the country to get its freedom. Because before the sovereign will actually know, they will start asking the president that America is suffocating us. Just like the IMF and the World Bank of this time are also demanding that for them to disburse the 131 billion loan facility to the country, we must pass finance bill as it is. Something that will really put the country into a protest mode. So ladies and gentlemen, that is my take on Ngugi Wadiongo's letter to President Tuto. And I've taken a bit of it because it is something that the country has been talking about. And it's key for us to look at that. Thank you. And let's meet in the next.